Welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba. And I'm Irving Price. All right, our guest this segment is Dr. W. Shannon McCool, President and CEO of RxBio, RxBio.com. Uh, you're going to want to listen to what this gentleman has to say. All right, uh, Dr. McCool, when we were when we left off, we were talking about um, how uh, your product, and I know you have more than one, uh, saves lives for rad- for radiation exposure, and you're the only company out there that does this that has products on the line. We're just starting to get into the financials. Can you bring us through some of the milestones and um, the financials? Don't I don't want you to get yourself in trouble with forward leading statements. So we won't go there. But what what's ahead for you for RX Bio, and then then we can get into some of the drugs that you already have that are presently available. Would you mind? Uh, no, wouldn't mind at all. Please go right ahead. Um, let's let's uh, milestones, forward-looking um, goals for the, as you as you move forward. Some of the things that investors who are listening may find very interesting before they um, they team up with you. Yes, pre- presently we are uh, at. Uh uh, at, at a stage where we have uh, made follow-on applications uh, to agencies of the federal government that uh, we have historically relied upon for funding, and uh, we expect to hear back from that. This is all competitive funding, as you might be able to appreciate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we expect to hear back from that uh, very shortly. In the meantime, what we're what we're doing is we're going to our current investor base and uh, we're asking them uh, if, if they are inclined to make uh, uh, some additional investment in the company and several of them have stepped forward and they're interested in, uh, have indicated an interest in doing that. Uh, we do plan to uh, examine the possibilities of uh, uh, doing a Reg A plus uh, uh, IPO uh, in the not-too-distant future. Uh, that's something that we've been working with with, uh, with Glenn Beerman and his group. Uh, Tycon. Yes, Tycon. Uh, we, we're, we're not finalized on that yet, and we've got a couple of uh, hoops that we still have to jump through in order to do that. But uh, but clearly this is uh, this is a critical product. It, it's not the only product that's under development for acute radiation uh, syndrome, but it is the only product that has shown a survival benefit for GIARS. GIARS is lethal within two weeks, and uh, is is a pretty significant uh, hurdle that one needs to get over. That, now, let me clear that up. So, Reg A plus uh, as an IPO means that non-accredited investors can invest in this, too. It's not just limited to only accredited investors. It broadens the spectrum of, of the potential investors with you to carry this into the next stage, right? That's that's our understanding, yes. Now, how critical is it to be able to treat GI ARS, and what happens if you don't and when? Uh if somebody gets exposed to a high dose of radiation, and by high dose, again, I'm talking 6 to 8 to 10, 12 gray, all of our studies have been done at, uh, at 10 gray and higher, uh, and someone gets exposed to radiation at that level, uh, they will die within two weeks if they are not treated with something, and presently the only something that we are aware of is RX100, and RX100, unfortunately, is not yet approved for use in humans. And so uh, we are quite anxious to get the funding together that will allow us to quickly expedite the development of this product and get it to the point where uh, FDA would approve it uh, under uh, an animal rule licensure uh, protocol. Dr. McCool, are there any drugs presently available to uh, treat G, um, GIARS, gastrointestinal issues like this? No. No? There are none. Wow, okay. Why aren't there any drugs currently? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Well, here's, here's a better question. Why are you so close to creating these 
um, these, the almost miracle cures, I mean, these breakthrough cures, and nobody else is around you. How, how did you manage to do that? Well, making the discovery that we could treat uh, GIARS successfully uh, after exposure was a major breakthrough, and 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 I, uh, it, it was kind of a monumental event in in my life and the life of of Dr. Gabor Ortigi, who's the chief scientific officer uh, for the company and uh, is also the inventor, one of one of the inventors of the product, and uh, he he had made the initial discoveries. Uh, that led to RX100 as a result of federal funding that he had received through his University of Tennessee Health Science Center uh, laboratories. And there came a point in time after the company had been formed and we had licensed the compound that uh, NIH requested to get an update on what his progress had been. And he and I were sitting around late one afternoon debating what we sent, and we sent him a chart uh, that showed uh, the effect of the GI tract, the cross-section of the GI tract, when it had been exposed to lethal uh, GI ARS uh, level radiation. And uh, the phone started ringing off the wall the next day, and they said, uh, are you telling us you've got something that would, would treat this? And we said, we're not only telling you we've got something that would treat it, we're telling you we have something that can treat it even if we administer it after the radiation exposure. So we were the first in the world to demonstrate that a compound could be used after lethal radiation exposure and result in uh, a survival benefit. And uh, that, that, that's, that's pretty amazing to me, and I've been doing this for several years now. Next step, what, what are we doing next with this? I mean, because th this is global ramifications. Next, next step is, is driven by how much money we have, to, we have to work with. We've been funded for the last uh, uh, three years by the NIAID division of the National Institutes of Health. Uh, we contemplate that we will, or at least we're hopeful, we will continue to, re to, to be funded by that agency. But we need more money than that, and so we're pulling out all the stops at this particular point in time to get the money pulled together that will allow us to expedite everything across the board to do the rest of the toxicology that has to be done and to do what FDA uh, wants to have us do. One of the things you have to appreciate is this is all new ground that's being plowed with this compound. And, 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 and this whole uh, arena of medicine when you get right down to it. Uh, RX100 is a pro-survival medication, and uh, that's, that's uh, very insignificant, or that's very significant, I mean. Dr. McCool, um, let's talk a little bit about your, <clears throat> your partners here. I'm very keen on the links between high-tech companies and biotech companies and their alma maters, their universities. How important is the University of Tennessee to you, and are you using that as a training ground to build brilliant scientists like yourself to perpetuate this, this kind of development? Tell us about the university. It, it has been absolutely critical, and it remains to be absolutely critical. Uh, our research facility is nested within the campus of the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. Uh, we are one of the larger users of, uh, of, of some of their facilities, and it would be very difficult for us to do the work that we have been able to do if we did not have the relationship that we have with the university. Now, the university is the holder of the uh, invention. They are the holder of the license, and so they will be entitled to a royalty stream off the uh, compound should we ever get to the point where we uh, generate uh, commercial sales of the compound. Now, when you say commercial sales of the compound, are you talking a, a, a municipality would be uh, something that would work with you, or Big Pharma would come in and say, I'm, I want to buy into this and then make it available to, to people who, individuals who, who, who could actually, like an EpiPen, walk around and use this? 
big pharma is certainly an option. Uh, we've we've not had be, big pharma beat our door down by any stretch of the imagination, and hmm. we suspect that part of the reason for that is because of the uh, the, the the specific market that exists out there for uh, a GI ARS uh, particular radiation countermeasure drug. Uh, however, this particular compound has other elements, other aspects of the drug that will allow the development of the drug for other indications, secretory diarrhea being uh, one major area. Secretory diarrhea is not a huge market for the United States, but it is a huge market in uh, areas outside the United States. And we've tested the compound. We've done uh, proof of concept uh, demonstrations using cholera toxin. Uh, it, it is a magnificent performer. Uh, it also prevents NSAID induced uh, uh, gastritis. And that's a, that's, that's a pretty significant market. We have not been able to move forward on those particular fronts due to lack of lack of uh, availability of sufficient funds to, to be allowed to do it. So it's, it's, as you might expect and your listeners might expect, you can't go down to the bank and borrow money to do drug development work with. If there's anything to be done, it's going to be the investors that step up and do this now. Dr. McCool, thank you so much for being our guest. Well, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. My pleasure. All right, you've been listening to Dr. W. Shannon McCool, President and CEO of RxBio, rxbio.com. And this is the wave of the future for solving some of our bigger issues. All right, um, you've been listening to CEO Money with Michael Yorba. Uh, I'm Mervyn Price. All right, we'll be right back on the other side of this break with Bauman Medical. We'll be speaking with Dr. Bauman. 